Hi, I'm Box Sal. This is Graham. Behind the camera we have Gage. This is our second video in a series for NRSM 102. The purpose of these videos is to complement the information. This video will describe the characteristics of grasses, forbs, and shrubs, as well as review the different parts of a grass plant. Grasses have joints or nodes. The stems are hollow. The leaves are parallel. In other words, the venation pattern of the veins and the leaves are parallel. The leaves come off at opposite sides of the stem and they have very inconspicuous flowers. The only grass-like plant that we're going to worry about in 102 are the sedges. They have triangular shaped stems or sedges have edges. The leaves have parallel veins. They come off in groups of three and the flowers are usually small and inconspicuous. Forbs have solid stems or often spongy type centers a lot like that, um, those packing peanuts that you see in a crate. They have net venation in the leaves and the flowers are often showy. Something like western yarrow is a good example of a forb. And finally the shrubs have woody centers, and in other words annular rings. They also have net venation in the leaves and oftentimes have showy flowers. An example of that would be big sagebrush. The parts of a grass plant include the inflorescence and other plant parts. Let's start with the three major inflorescences found on grass plants. The first one would be a raceme. Racemes are usually symmetrical and located on each side of the main stem. However, we're going to see an example of a one-sided raceme in blue gramma. A panicle means that the spikelets sit on pedicels or smaller stems that come from the main axis and a spike means that each spikelet is attached directly to the main stem. Within each one of those inflorescences the only thing you need to be responsible for is knowing that the next smallest subunit of an inflorescence would be the spikelet and then that spikelet is usually composed of a number of florets. So the spikelet is the next largest size item and then smaller than that are the florets. And other than that you don't have to learn all those other terms on this sheet. Now let's continue down the grass plant and look at the other components. The main stem is called the comb on the comb you'll find two leaf parts. The part that is not attached to the stem is called the blade. The blade is then where it wraps around the comb. That's called the sheath. Those bumps or joints are called nodes. The region in between two nodes is called the inner node region. And then near the roots, if it's an above ground stem, that's called the stolon, and if it's a below ground stem, that's called the rhizome. In the collar region, or where the sheath and the blade come together, we find two other units. A structure called the ligule, which is usually a papery structure located right in the collar region, and in the case of wheat grasses, oftentimes some plants have oracles or little thread-like projections that emanate at that juncture in the collar region. So now let's look at these structures on real plants. This is blue gramma, which is an example of a one-sided raceme. This is smooth brome, which has a panicle inflorescence. These little stems that come off the main axis are called pedicels, and when all those pedicels originate from a common point, that's called a world panicle. This is a spike. When each one of these spikelets is attached directly to the main stem or the rachis, that would be called a spike inflorescence. So this is a wheat grass and all the wheat grasses have a spike inflorescence. 
Each leaf has two parts. The blade, which is being pulled right there, is that is not attached to the stem, is called the leaf blade. And the part that wraps around the stem, which was just pulled down, would be called the sheath. The junction of the blade and the sheath is called the collar region, and at that collar region is often a papery, thin structure called the ligule, and that's where the pencil was pointing. In the collar region, especially on wheat grasses, is also a set of structures called oracles, which are two little thread-like projections that clasp around the stem. So the bumps or joints on the stem are called nodes or joints. The region in between them would be called the inner node region. Often the spikelets are held in subunits called glooms. So here we have mountain brome. What's left after the seeds have fallen out would be a set of glooms where the seed head is detached. The thread-like projection that often comes off of many seeds is called an awn. So this is an example of needle and thread, which has a small seed that comes to a very sharp point and a very long 15 centimeter awn. An above ground stem is called a stolen. So on buffalo grass you can see that this structure, which is look like little runners like a strawberry plant, would be called a stolon, so that plant would be stoloniferous. A scaly structure located below the ground, which is a stem, not a root, is called a rhizome. This is an example of a smooth brome rhizome, and you notice it starts another plant.